Happy Friday, DMS. I hope everyone had a good week. Caleb, what are you doing? I'm practicing my bat flips. What's a bat flip? Let's go watch this next feature to find out more about bat flips. Do you ever wonder what a bat flip is? Well, I interviewed a few people to teach you and show you what they are. Do you know what a bat flip is? Yes. Can you show us what a bat flip is? I can show you what a bat flip is. Go ahead. Please pitch me the ball. what a bat flip is? Yes, I do. Can you explain what a bat flip is? Yes. So, let's say that you're up to bat and there's this really good pitcher at the plate. And this guy throws you one right down the cheese. And you hit it right on the barrel of the bat. And you know that this sucker is gone. And you're like, that's gone. You just flip the bat in any way that you want to. Like, you can flip it that way, that way behind you. You can just throw it straight up in the air. That's basically what a bat flip is. Have you ever seen a bat flip happen? Yes, I have. I've also been part of a bat flip. Do you have any videos of you bat flipping? Yes. I knew you what a bat flip is. Yes. Can you explain to us what a bat flip is? Bat flip is when you hit a big hit like a home run or something. Just flip your bat. Can you demonstrate what a bat I can. flip is? <laughs> This is Keaton Evans signing off for Discovery Middle School News. Hi, my name is Joven Gill, and this is the Chiefs' first playoff win since 1994. It has been 22 years since they last won. That's a very long time. That's when Joe Montana was the quarterback. That's a very long time ago. That's also when Nancy Kerrigan got hit with a pipe by her opponent's husband, Tanya Harding. Also... The next president, the president at that time was Bill Clinton, so that was way back. There was also a tropical storm, Alberto, that's, that's very crucial. It was very bad, 32 deaths in that. And the MLB didn't have a postseason because players went on strike that season. So we are here with Anthony Sanders. Do you know when the Chiefs last won the first playoff game? Uh, no, I do not. Well, it was 22 years ago. Wow. Yes. Well, um, hey, we're going to win in this 1994. Year. But that was only the playoff win. I'm not talking about the Super Bowl win. Mm -hmm. So so what do you have, um, like what hopes do you have for the Chiefs in this playoff? Well, I know the Chiefs are on a winning streak, and I believe that when they're on a winning streak, they're unstoppable. So kind of like the Royals. Yes, exactly. Same thing going on here. I like your confidence, Anthony. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we are here with uh, Caleb. How are you doing today, Caleb? I'm doing good. Do you know the last time the Chiefs won a playoff game? I believe it was 22 years ago. Yeah, that's, that's very long. Yes, it was. Well, do you know, like, who was the president at that time? No, I don't know. It was Bill Clinton. Oh. Yeah, that's very long back. That's wow. way back there. Um, we had a lot of hopes about the Chiefs this year. We did. And then they lost to the Patriots. Yeah. But... It, we still we still won a game. We won a game. Yeah. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. Here at Discovery Middle School, the eighth grade fac students are baking up something good. Let's go talk to Miss Dickus and a few students to find out more about the cookie wars. What are the cookie wars? Cookie wars are something that we've decided to do for our eighth grade uh, facts class, which basically uh, for our foods, you know, we talk about principles of baking, so kind of what goes into a cookie and or baking in general. And so the kids then at the end of the semester, um, kind of as their final, create their own cookie from scratch. So they decide what type of fat, uh, what type of flavoring, what type of cookie it's going to be, and then they kind of design it, and then they have a little bit of a competition. Who generally participates in the cookie? Just our eighth grade uh, facts class, and it's usually at the end of the semester, again, kind of like as a final and uh, it's any class that's eighth grade. So sometimes I, we have multiple classes participating, and then other times, depending on my semester, there may only be one eighth grade class. Who do you generally have judge the competition? We usually ask the principals, the counselors. Uh, Mr. Brown usually likes to participate, um, and then any other teachers that maybe are off that, that hour and can come in and participate. I know we've had Mrs. Baker, uh, Mrs. Smith came last semester, um, Mrs. Williams from the front desk. So just kind of anybody who's willing to come in and try a bunch of cookies. 
Okay. I'm Colby. And I'm Megan. Did you guys participate in the first semester facts cookie wars? Yes. Yes. What cookies did you and your group make? My group made a peppermint cannoli cookie. And my group, we made salted caramel pretzel cookies. Did your group win any awards? Yeah, we got the most creative and the best looks. And my group, we won best taste. What is your name? Britton. Did you participate in the first semester facts cookie wars? Yes. What type of cookie did you and your group make? We had an ice cream cookie cake. Did your group win any awards? Uh, no, we had a, like a rocky star. I ice cream was melting the entire time. <laughs> they couldn't even eat it. Hopefully, you decide to take interest in facts and the 8th grade cookie wars. This is McKenna signing off for Discovery Middle School Broadcasting. Wow, those co cookies sure made me really hungry. Yeah, me too. What are you drawing? I'm practicing my art so I can get Fine Artist of the Week. Uh, well, let's go find out who the real Fine Artist of the Week are. Recently at DMS, Mr. Holtis's advisory created the Fine Artist of the Week Award. Let's go look at some of the students who won the award and the teachers who nominated them. What is Fine Artist of the Week? Fine Artist of the Week is just a way to recognize our outstanding Fine Artists of the Week. So drama and choir and band and art. How do you win Fine Artist of the Week? Well, um, Mr. Holtus has been, he kind of took over the reins here and he sends out an email every week and asks us to submit two of our best fine artists from the class that we teach. How do you choose the fine artists of the week? Uh, basically, I look at just the past projects that we've been doing. Um, I look how they execute those projects. I look who uh, can develop their idea the best, who comes up with, with the finest uh, final product, um, who can follow directions, I guess energy level, spirit, and uh, all of those things come into play for me picking the fine artist of the week. Thank you. I'm in band. Well, actually, last semester I was in art. I played the flute. Probably the clay mug, because it was pretty cool and pretty fun, and I got to play with clay. I feel great. It feels pretty good, you know, because I am pretty good at art, and I don't want to brag a thing. So, thanks, Miss Deaver. Congratulations to everybody who won this award. This is Emily Barnes signing off for DMS News. Have a great weekend, DMS. Before the famous hoverboard came into existence, there were other types of boards. They included skateboards, snowboards, and longboards. I interviewed some students about what type of board they ride. What do you ride? A snowboard. How long have you ridden this? Since I was like six or seven. Where do you usually ride? Breckenridge, Colorado. Worst wipeout? Um, when I was like seven, I took a tumble down the mountain and I broke my wrist. Thank you. Okay, um, what type of board do you ride? Longboards. How long have you ridden the longboard? For about a year and a half. Where do you ride? Uh, I usually just ride around my neighborhood, down hills and stuff. Worst wipeout. Um, going down a hill, I uh, my board started swerving and it came out from under me. And I fell on my face. What do you ride? I ride a duster longboard. How long have you ridden this? Probably about a year now. Where do you usually ride? Around my neighborhood or on Hodge Park Road. Okay. Worst wipeout. Uh. Probably going down a hill and going in the grass and rolling around. Thank you. And this is Victoria Peck signing off for Discovery Middle School Broadcasting. Coming in the fall of 2016, there will be a new shopping center across from Liberty High School where the old B&B Theater is. There will be almost 15 stores going in, including Academy Sports and Outdoors, Spin Pizza, and many other restaurants and shops. Let's go see what students have to think about the new Liberty Commons. Have you heard about any of the new stores going in where the old B&B theater was next to yes. the high school? Do you know any of the stores going in? Uh, Spin Pizza and Academy Sports. Are you sad about the Japanese steakhouse going out or any of the other places? No, no, no. 
After hearing the stores going in, which ones are you most excited about? Spin Pizza. Thank you. Have you heard about the new stores going in where the old B&B theater was? Yes. Do you know any of the stores going in? Yes, I've heard about Academy Sports, The Shoe Place, Gordman's, and Ulta Beauty. Are you sad about any of the other stores going out? Yeah, I'm going to miss the movie theater, but I know that the new additions will be better. After hearing the stores going in, which ones are you most excited about? Um, I'm really excited about Gordman's and the Ulta Beauty Supply Store. Thank you. Make sure to go check out the new Liberty Commons coming this fall. Hope to see you all there, DMS. Wow, that's really cool. I can't wait to shop there. Yeah. What you thinking about, Riley? I can't decide what to do for track and field. Well, maybe this next feature will help you decide. Let's go watch this feature to find out more about track and field. The track and field season is right around the corner. Let's go talk to Coach Wells and some students about it. When are track and field tryouts? Track and field doesn't really have tryouts per se. The season starts February 29th, and there are plenty of events for everybody to compete in. What events can students compete in? There are track events and there are field events. There's everything from short distance to mid distance to long distance. So we start at the 100 meters and go all the way up to the mile run. Uh, there's 200 meters, 400 meters, 800 meters. Then there's relays. Uh, there are hurdles for boys and for girls. In the field, there's multiple jumping events and throwing events. So we've got high jump, long jump, triple jump, uh, shot and disc. There's a lot of options, something for everybody. And what grades can participate in this sport? Track and field is just for 8th graders. Alright, thank you. Are you doing track? Yes. What events are you participating in? Um, the hurdles, 100 meter, and 200 meter. And why did you decide to do those? Because I'm not good at long distance and I liked track because of all the fun like events in it. Are you doing track? Yes. What events are you participating in? The 100, 200, hopefully a relay, and chocolate. And why did you decide to do those? Because the 100 and 200 are really easy, and I'm more of a sprinter, not a um, distance runner, and I like sprinting. And then shot put, everybody's told me to try it because they think I'd be good at it, so I'm going to try it. Are you doing track? Uh, yes, I think I am. What events are you going to participate in? Uh, I think I'll probably do high jump and maybe long jump and pole vault if they have it. <laughs> Why do you decide to do this? Uh, just because I think they're fun and we did them in PE one time. I hope to see you at tryouts, DMS. This is Colby signing off for Discovery News. There was a recent Powerball given out January 13th for $1.5 billion. We asked a few students around the school how they would react, what they would do with the money, where they would travel, and what they know about it. And here's what they said. If I were to tell you that you just won the Powerball Lottery, how would you react? Probably, like, freak out. What would you do with that money? Um, well, I would buy a house in South Haven, Michigan, and move there. And mm -hmm. then, when I grow up, go to medical school and become a doctor. Where would you travel? Well, now I would travel to South Haven, Michigan. Um, all around the world. If I were to tell you that you just won the Powerball, how would you react? I would just be like, man, I won the Powerball, it was expected. I was actually one of the winners. <laughs> what would you buy? I would buy the Golden State Warriors and bring them to Kansas City. So where, Kansas City could have a basketball team. Where would you travel? Just, I would, you know, go to the usual California. Kansas City is awesome. What do you know about the most recent Powerball given out? Um, it was like 1.5 billion dollars, and it's it was like the the biggest Powerball, and three people won in like three different states. Do you know what states they were? California, Tennessee, Texas. <laughs> And I don't know the third one. <laughs> Do you know how much money each person was given after the taxes were taken out? Uh, like 400 billion, or I mean million. You might not have won this time, but there's a chance that you could be the next winner. 
This is Claire Rogers signing off from DMS Broadcasting. Have a great week in DMS. Do you know what spike ball is? Kind of. Tell me what you know about it. It's like Antis, but on a trampoline. Yes. Have you ever played it before? No. Would you like to play it sometime? Yes. Thank you. Do you know what spike ball is? Yes, yes I do. Tell me what you know about it. Uh, I know that it's a two-on-two -two sport where you can bounce the ball off a trampoline and score a point. Um, have you ever played it before? Uh, yes, I have. Do you know what spike ball is? Kinda, sort of. Tell me what you know about it. It's a game where you, like, hit the ball on the trampoline, get someone out. Um, have you ever played it before? No. Would you like to play it sometime? I would love it. Spike ball is a two-on-two -two sport. It's very similar to volleyball, but instead of the ball going over the net, you bounce the ball off of the net. Once the ball has bounced back off the net, the other team has one, two, and three total hits to get the ball back onto the net. When the ball hits the net, it is a change of possession. This means if the ball hits the ground, it is the other team's point. This is Will, signing off for Discovery News. Spike ball sounds really fun. I'm definitely going to play that sometime. I bet you I can beat you any day. I'll take that challenge. Well, it's time to wrap up the show. Have, Have a great, great weekend, weekend DMS. DMS.